Timirandasya Janam Juna Salakaya Chakshun Gitam Jena Tasma Shri Gurave Nama Nama Shrishtam Manumati Satriputram Matrasha Rupam Rupam Tasya Grajamuru Purim Naturim Gashtavatim Radha Kundam Giri Paramaho Radhika Madhavasam Rabdo Yasya Pratita Gripaya Shri Gurum Tamnato Shmi Vancha Kalpataru Vyascha Gripa Sindhu Vyai Vacha Pati Tanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnavipyanamo Nama Nikila Shruti Mali Ratnamala Diti Nirajita Padapanka Janta Aji Mukta Kulai Rupa Shamanam Parita Stam Adinam Samshrayami Anare Pita Chadim Tirat Kadunayabaturna Kalu Shamar Paitamunatosh Valarasam Savakti Shriam Hari Purata Sundara Duty Kadamba Sandi Pita Sadari Dai Kandadesh Purato was a chinandana Ajan Lambita Bujo Kanaka Vadato Sankirtanai Kapitaro Kamalaya Takshu Vishwambaro Dijavaro Jugadharma Palo Vande Jagat Priyakaro Karuna Vataru Adini Shakti Sarupaya Gauranga Suridayacha Vakta Shakti Pradhanaya Gadadharanamastute He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Radhi Vrindavanadhi Shri Karuna Amrita Vahini Kripaya Nijapadabja Dashan Mayam Pradiyatam Bhaktya Bihina Aparadha Lakshay Sipta Sakamadi Tarangamadhe Kripam Aitam Sharanam Prabhanam Brinde Maste Sharanaravindam Vrindin Maste Chalanara Vindam Srila Gurudev Ki Jai Sriman Mahaprabhu Ki Jai Shad Buch Poranga Ji Ki Jai Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai Shri Ratha Yatra Mahamahotsav Ki Jai गौर भक्त बंद की जाए गौर प्रमाण सो गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल फ्यू प्रणाम अगेन टू ऑल द प्रेजेंट वंस एंड हियर वी आर टुडे शेयरिंग सम वर्ड्स ऑफ ऑनर इन प्रेज ऑफ फेस्टिवल ऑफ चैरिट्स दैट वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग टुडे श्री रात यात्रा this has there has there has been considerable Udicha margin Lila yesterday and even today so hopefully heart heart is prepared for welcoming the Lord of the universe if you will in our hearts he's the Lord of the universe but we want him to be the Lord of our hearts the ultimately <laughs> so so <clears throat> So some, oh, one, two, like a month ago, three weeks ago, Mukunda Prabhu from Lachwa invited me to share some words regarding Rath Yatra because he was sharing some um, some series of <clears throat> of kata with with some devotees, and they were like kind of preparing the stage for. Today, so they started speaking about Rath Yatra like a month before, which sometimes sometimes happens to be the case. 
in the attempt to trying to 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 arrive to the official day somehow prepare for that like when sometimes we mentioned the other day when nowadays you you may travel to the dam by plane and physically you are there in a few hours but mentally you arrive two, two weeks after that and maybe after 10 days you have to leave <laughs> but in, in the older times, you were going there by walk, walking or by cart or something. So it would take months to arrive. But in your mind, you you arrived there before arriving physically. The, the whole long journey created this anticipation and this prospect. And, and, and you already are arguably arrived there before arriving there physically. So similarly, sometimes these great festivities like Ratha Yatra and so many others are anticipated by, by Vaishnavas some anticipation basically not just like okay tomorrow is Gorpunim let's meditate on Mahaprabhu <laughs> but somehow let's try to anticipate that you know? sometimes they will share a series of kata like one month before or something like this so when, whenever comes the day whatever it may be it warrants you are there you are actually celebrating this and so somehow uh, we shared some words like a month ago about Rathiatra and Mukunda Prabhu invited me to speak more. I mean, he invited me to speak on Ratha Yatra, and I chose to to speak about Ratha Yatra from the perspective of Guru Kshetra Dham. Mm -hmm. And today, in complement with that, today is the official day of, of Ratha Yatra. Uh, I'd like to share some words regarding Ratha Yatra, but seen through the from the Dwarka perspective, if you will, which is somehow complementary. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course, all of this through the lens of our particular tradition, which is, of course, a particular uh, lens through which we appreciate reality, one of many valid ones hmm, through one particular Siddhanta, and therefore we belong to a particular Sampradaya. And sampradaya means something which fully gives, Sampradaya, which gives what? A particular thought. It's a school of thought, Sampradaya. So it gives a particular siddhanta, and that takes us to to appreciate reality from a particular perspective. Basically, reality is like a multifaceted jewel that that can be approached from one side or the other. And <clears throat> being members of the Gaudiya Sampradaya, which is a very specific school of thought, we are we approach reality in very unique ways, as you already are familiar with. <laughs> and Jagannath. Is not the exception to that rule. Jagannath is uh, conceived and approached in so many different ways by so many different people. Jagannath Puri, from Buddhists to up to Christians, up to followers of Sankaracharya, other branches of Vaishnavism, and Gaudiya Vaishnavism in particular. That's our focus today. So my point is today, Rathiyatra has been celebrated, but so many will celebrate it from def different perspectives. And I'm not saying they are not valid, it's just different perspectives. So even in our own tradition, we can, can approach Rathiyatra from different perspectives, as we spoke already from the Kurukshetra perspective. Today we will learn more toward the la Dwarka lens, if you will. But all of that is in our Sampradaya. Hmm? But before some brief words regarding what we shared a month ago regarding Kurukshetra, because it's just quite connected nonetheless. As we spoke the other day, Bhakti Nathakur's day, Kadadar Bhav, Tiro um, Krishna met, meets the Brajavas in Kurukshetra, uh, like after 100 years of separation. I mean, you, you cannot even conceive to live 100 years, so to speak, to be separated from someone for 100 years. And what to speak of after 100 years of separation, still love, keeps growing. <laughs> so more inconceivable and inconceivable. So you try to imagine after such a situation, love keep, keeps growing, keeps growing. Meeting is there after a century. And everything is there for consummating the reunion, except for one thing, which is one of the most crucial ones, which is the stage on which the drama will be performed. So it's like, okay, we have a drama today, but Unfortunately, the stage is not there or it's broken and has not arrived. So result, drama cancelled. You have to give the money back for the tickets and all that. 
So Krishna and the gopis are there in, in, in Kurukshetra for the solar eclipse. And Krishna is inviting them to join us. As we know, he will say, she, they will say, it's not possible. Stage is not there. Vrindavan is not there. The playground is not there. Ban is not there. Forest is not there. Jamon is not there. Flute is not there. Peacock feather is not there. You are not there. And therefore, we are not there. <laughs> so it's not possible. Hmm? So, so, of course, the symbology of all this will be by this, Krishna is asking to the gopis, come to me, come with me to Dwarka. And the gopis say, no, come with us to Vrindavan. Our, our hearts is Vrindavan. And interestingly, this meeting in Kurukshetra, this is the only time that the Braja gopis are leaving Vrindavan. Hmm. They, they never go out of Vrindavan, basically. But they go out of Vrindavan for this particular occasion to make a point, And they return to Vrindavan. They were out of Vrindavan to make a point promoting the glory of Vrindavan and they returned to Vrindavan. <laughs> like we said the other day, Gadada Pandit no? crossed the limits, the borders of Jagannath Puri to make a point. He went back to Jagannath Puri <laughs> to make a point in the context of, of Seva. <clears throat> so in that particular mood, uh, Kurukshetra delivers a certain uh, view of the Rathayatra and Mahaprabhu himself, he participated, he celebrated Rathayatra by entering into this particular window, the Kurukshetra window, mostly as we know. He's dancing and singing in, 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 in the sacred procession of Rathayatra, and suddenly he starts to sing what our Guru Maharaj will say a pop song. <laughs> what, what will be a pop song in modern times? In that time, will be some verse from secular poetry in which a, a girl is expressing <clears throat> uh, her being close to her beloved and so many things are there, but something is missing there. The particular circumstance, if you will, the particular details that help to consummate the union are not there. So she cannot fully get to that point. So Mahaprabhu is singing this song that basically a few understand. And then as we know, Rupa Goswami like decrypts you say in English? No. And he writes, writes his own verse in which he's expressing how Sri Radha is actually saying that Mahaprabhu was in Radha Bhav and Radha, and Radha Yatra and Puri expressing what Sri Radha felt when she was next to Krishna but not able to meet him. So only Rupa Goswami knew his mind. Well, Sarup Damodar as well. Mahaprabhu read that verse. He became blush. He blushed and he slapped Rupa Goswami. Like, how can you know me that much? This is too much that you know my mind. Sri Chaitanya Manobishtam. That's why this glorification comes then. Stop it again. Sri Rupa was able to establish the mind of Mahaprabhu in the world <laughs> because he knew the mind of Mahaprabhu so well. And if there's one Leela that shows how much he knew Mahaprabhu's mind, is this one, Rathiyatra. So basically, this Rathiyatra and the Kurukshetra idea is. The gopis are telling Krishna, we cannot go with you to Dwarka. You come with us to Vrindavan. Without Vrindavan, we cannot consummate our final union. And interestingly, technically, strictly speaking, that didn't happen, literally. It's not that after Kurukshetra, Krishna said, okay, let's go to Vrindavan. But the point was made. The point was made. So Rathiyatra makes this point from the Kurukshetra perspective. Like, without Vrindavan... There is not possible. Without Vrindavan, there is no Vrindavan Krishna, no Braja Krishna. And the, only the gopis want that, want the feet of those Braja Krishna, of that Braja Krishna walking into the pastures of, of Raj. That's what they say. Who's the verse? Who's Chatinalina Lava Padara Vindam? They say, yeah, basically we are material, we are entangled ladies, like are entangled in the samsara and material world with our domestic duties. The gopis say, we, don't, are, we are not great yogis like those who meditate on your feet. So what we want is your feet hmm, residing in our hearts. So the point is, what's the gopis' hearts? Vrindavan. So when they say you, we want your feet in our hearts, means we want your feet walking back in in branch. That's what we want. That's the only thing that can satisfy us, save us. So this is Rathiyatra, basically. It's very interesting. 
celebration as we were speaking with one devotee some weeks ago in Michigan. One says Rath Theater is the festival of vulnerability. <laughs> That's what we'll see, in which God Himself is so much affected by love and separation and expressing that whether it's Jagannath, whether it's Mahaprabhu in, in Radhabab, etc. And he was he was we were laughing, he was telling me Maharaj, Maharaj sometimes because I asked him there was some Rathiata who was to we perform in, in a few days when we were speaking a month ago. I said, are you going? And he told me, to be honest, Maharaj, I'm I'm not that inspired to be to go because nowadays for many Rathiatra is more like a social event and everyone goes there with their best face and cloth. And when you study what Rathiatra actually means, it has I prefer to stay here and try to enter into the mood of vulnerability and separation. Not criticizing anyone, but he choosing like, I, it's a festival of vulnerability. It's not a festival for like, no, my best face on the picture with Jagannath. Hey, Jagari. <laughs> like this time of point he was saying. So it's, a, it's an introspective moment. We are trying to accompany Bhagavan in a moment of greatest necessity as we were speaking this day. Lots of vulnerability. And lots of potential empowerment coming from that vulnerability. So we we spoke about that some a month ago, roughly at from the Kurukshetra perspective. And today we will go to Dwarka. And we will I would like to share basically two main narratives about that are are presented in connection to Rathiatra in relation to Dwarka Dham. But first First, I'd like to introduce the whole thing with some uh, introduction, introduction to, to how Brajabab plays out in Dwarka and what's the role of Dwarka Lila in connection to Brindavan. No? Because as, as we know, Krishna resides in Brindavan in his Prakat Lila for 11 years, approximately a few months more. And then he goes to Mathura for a brief period of time, and then he goes to Dwarka for a longer period of time more than a century, interestingly. But interestingly for us, Gaudi as a period in Vrindavan is the most crucial. Your first 11 years, you acquired the main scars. Then you cannot change. <laughs> so Krishna spent his main first years in Vrindavan. That's what he was. No matter where he were, he seemed someone else, but actually he was a Brajavasi at heart. So as my Guru Maharaj likes to say, <clears throat> this Mathura Lila and this Dwarka Lila are reflecting back on Vrindavan. If properly understood, indirectly, they are pointing to the glory of Braj by contrast, by showing a different type of love. And if you are following properly the narrative, you will always go back and realize, oh, this Braja Bhav is unique. It's the main point of the Bhagavatam. It's the Bhagavatam is nine cantos building up to Vrindavan. And then after the Vrindavan Lila, more chapters are de dedicated to Lila's outside of Vrindavan in the 10th canto. And on top of that, you have 11th and 12th canto. So if you don't have proper guidance, you may not understand that this is the main focal point of the Bhagavatam. Because you may say, oh, yes, there are some chapters, like whatever some 39 chapters or something. Then Akura comes, takes Krishna out, and then you have like six, like 50 chapters for Mathura and Dwarka Lila, two more cantos and nine cantos in the beginning. So in numbers, it doesn't seem that extravagant thing. <laughs> but again, we go, these are not about numbers, about quantity <laughs> and quality. So if properly understood, all these first, first nine cantos, all these remaining 50 chapters in the 10th canto, two cantos at the end, are all of them to build up to proper understanding of Rajalila and then reflect back to guarantee that we properly understood the chapters of Rajalila, all the remaining sections. So, so I'd like to introduce first by sharing some narrative from Sri. Uh, Brihad Bhagavatamrita of Sri Lasanatan Goswami Pad, where, where he is very, very beautifully depicting the nature of Braja Baba and how that's hitting Krishna you know, while he is in Dwarka. 
Well, he very beautifully narrates that. So I'll share some narrative and share also some verses, literally how he's sharing. If, if you would like to go through the whole thing in detail, which I recommend, this is mostly in chapter six and seven of the first part of the book. Mm -hmm. So basically the, the general scene, again, I'm giving a summary here. Krishna is, is in Dwarka. Mm -hmm. and he's extremely disturbed in separation from the inhabitants of Raj. Mm -hmm. So a, a day like today, we could say, if you want to create further empathy, mm -hmm. he's crying, <clears throat> Krishna is crying in his room, in his royal room in Dwarka and not going out. So it's it's like, I don't know, you have the president of Finland and everyone is waiting for him in the whatever, White House, Red House, I don't know which color is here. Every country, they have a different color. <laughs> and it's not coming and they are calling the president has not come to what's going on. He's in his room. He's not He's not opening the door. And we hear that he's crying and crying and crying since the morning. It's midday. He's not coming. And we're knocking. He's just crying. It's you get preoccupied. What's going on here? So that's the situation. Krishna in Dwarka is basically the the all in all there, even in terms of kshatriya like functions, and they're waiting for him to begin their day, but he's not coming out of his room and he's crying. He, they never saw him like that. Basically, they got some hints here and there, as we will see, but not like in this intense expression. So. The Dwar or the Dwarakabasis, which are uh, uh, outside the room, the intimate fam family members like Rukmini and some other queens, are like to to conjecture about what's 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 taking place on the other side of the door, basically. While they continue hearing Krishna crying, and so Rukmini will say, "Well, I have some experience of that. No? I mean, none that's coming intensely in the light of the day, but many nights, not to say every night." <laughs> Krishna is crying and he's calling by name different ladies. I'm quite curious about that. No? that well, we we'll connect with one of the narratives regarding today's Rath Theater. No? He's calling not only different ladies, sometimes he's calling the gopis. No? So you can imagine you are sleeping with your wife and your husband is calling no? Maria, Elena, <laughs> no? <laughs> in, in romantic tone. No? <laughs> So, <laughs> so and then you will have a very unique morning is Tagosti in a few hours. You know, when you open your eyes, you someone will be waiting for you there with some was Danda, chastisement method. <laughs> Which is uh, who is that Elena? Who is that Maria? Who are all eight hundred one hundred and eight you were mentioning one after now? <laughs> or sometimes Krishna will call in at in night Yashoda. I'm asking, Mama, bring butter. Butter, I want butter. Like sleep by crying and calling that well sleep. Or sometimes he will adopt three Banga Lalita. He will be three crooked in three parts while sleeping. No? So, so the queen sometimes will see all the things they never been in in Vrindavan. No? Or sometimes they will hear Krishna calling different cows, no? calling them like trying to recollect them after a day outside in the pastures. No? So Rukmini is, is giving examples like this, like saying, this is not new in one sense. This is going on, at least for us, his wives at night in, in bed. That's happening when he's sleeping. And then Satyabhama interrupts with her unique mood, more left-wing sided, if you will. And she said, but why you are speaking only about the night? That's happening not only during the night, Satyabhama is saying. That's happening during the day sometimes. Sometimes he's He's approaching me, and instead of calling me by name, he's confusing me with some gopi. And, and she's saying that not precisely ecstatic because of saying that, no? <laughs> in her particular mood. So this way, different <clears throat> inhabitants, there are trying to give their versions of it. Baladev also is there. Of course, he has been in, he had been in Brindavan and say, and I've, I've gone to Brindavan, as you know, as a messenger. I've tried to console the Brajabasis, and Krishna promised that he will go back, but he didn't. Of course, all of them have this idea. It's because of Vrindavan that's taking place. On some level or another, Balaram will know more. The Dwarakabas is just heard on some level about that. But all of them were like conjecturing about what's going on on the other side of the, of the door. So suddenly Krishna opens the door. 
and goes and leaves his room. And he appears in front of the whole Dwarka of his intimate retinue there, and all of them like, look at him. He stops speaking, and he's crying and crying. All his body's like, how to say, you know, like drenched with tears, red eyes. You know, like after, I mean, you know how you are when you cry after three, four hours. Generally, why we don't cry for three, four hours, but Krishna can do that and, and, and in a real way. <laughs> so Krishna looks at all the Dwarkas and say, yes. My heart is as hard as a thunderbolt, he's basically saying. Mm -hmm. Because since till now, it has not been split in two yet. Still full, still complete. There must be some lots of hardness in my heart. I just has to do something about this. Like I'm confirming, I'm crying about my Vrindavan, but somehow I remain alive. This classical expression, if I will love you, I mean, the fact that I, I'm still alive proves that I don't love you. Because if not in separation from you, I would have died immediately. Many times we hear this type of like this. So Krishna is saying something similar here. Still, my heart remains intact. Basically, I'm still alive. My heart is hard as a thunderbolt. But I have to do something about that. I cannot continue like this. So he asked Uddhava. Remember, Uddhava is a resident of Dwarka. He's Krishna's, uh, how do you say, minister? A counselor, personal counselor, and a friend also, and very intimate. And he had been in Brindavan, as we know. He had been somehow through some passage rite or something, some form of conversion, if you will, some epiphany after going to the Braj. So Anudava will say, well, I mean, based on my experience, after going to Brindavan and witnessing what, what they need, how they are and what they need, they told me, and I asked them, and I tried to console them, but they told me, the only, we, want, we only want Krishna back. That's the only thing that can console us, nothing else. Not messages, not letters, not messengers. I mean, we appreciate all that, but we want him back. <laughs> now imagine if you're waiting for your beloved and the beloved since one messenger, would have second messenger, Balaram, one letter, another letter. I say, okay, thank you, but where are you? We want you, basically. And the years pass, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. <laughs> I know what Udav say. they were waiting so much for you that even when they saw me uh, and, I, and they heard the message you were sending through me, because we know on some level that message can be taken as very boring and philosophical, <laughs> In which Krishna is speaking in a more general way. So Uda is saying here to the to the pen of Sanatan Goswami, when they hear my me your message through me, they almost die in disappointment. Because they were just expecting which is the day that Krishna will return. And that was not included in the message. Till now they're asking that. Till, till now they're just keeping uh, th their life breath only on the on the that little line of that. Hope when you will return. Because you say you will return. He left and down to say, I will return in a few days. But for some people, a few days is subjective. So they are keep waiting. Well, what does it mean a few days for Krishna? Already a century has passed. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, Udab say this and say, and they were just waiting for you and dying for you and leaving for you. <laughs> and I just tried to do my best while being there. He stayed like for a year after. And I tried to do my best to keep them alive. That's what, what I could try. I was trying to do. You, could you try to imagine the dimension of love? He was struggling to keep them alive. That's not an easy service. But as we said the other day, we have to prepare ourselves for that seven eternity <laughs> on a daily basis. Or is that they will be about to die. They need to be saved. <laughs> we now think I need to be saved. But <laughs> eventually, full circle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it is said that then Krishna turned to Balaram, who also went after Uddhava as a messenger and asked advice, what to do, Balaram? Uddhava was just telling me that I have to return, there's no other option. And Balaram started to describe according to his own experience what's the condition of Vrindavan. And again told him, Krishna, only your presence can alleviate the Brajabhasis and can them bring them back to life. They are still alive, but 
they're like an in-between stage. You cannot notice if they're alive or not. You know, sometimes the classical images, they will put some cotton on your nose to see if still some air is passing. So they seem all dead. Still they are alive. Somehow they retain their life breath in the hope of you to come. Because if you go and they are actually dead, that will create suffering from you. And they cannot even think about that. They created some suffering. So somehow they struggle to remain alive. <clears throat> so <clears throat> what's Krishna's reaction after hearing this from Baladeva and Uda? And what's the Dwarakabasi's reaction to Krishna's reaction? I'll read a few verses directly from Sanatana Goswami. Having heard this, Krishna, who is gentle by nature and tormented by the suffering of others, grasped Balaram by the neck and shed a flood of tears, like a person whose life is in ruin. As he cried with loud sobs in his beautiful voice, the tears washed away the cosmetics from his body. He and Balaram then rolled on the ground and for a moment lost consciousness. Seeing the two lords crying in this unprecedented, lamentable state, all the residents uh, of the inner chambers lost control of themselves. Brohini, Uddhava, Divaki, Rukmini, Satyabhama, and all the rest, they all lost control and sobbed again and again. You can imagine, visualize the, the situation. All of them on the ground rolling and crying like an epidemic of divine lamentation. So this crying became so loud that other yadus who were not at the spot heard that at the distance, like Vasudev, Ugrasen, and they got close to the situation and they contemplated such a, you can imagine the picture, and they themselves start to cry and to sob and to roll on the ground. And it is said that this became so loud, so intense that it reached the devas on different platforms. And Brahma and others heard that and arrive at the spot. So Brahma saw that and was Vimohan again. <laughs> Another chapter of his Vimohan series, if you will. And he was thinking how to restore Bhagavan to his normal state. How, what, what can I contribute here, basically? So he came with one idea. And the idea is basically called Nava Vrindavan. Maybe you heard about that. So now Vrindavan is basically like new Vrindavan. So there is one place nearby Dwarka. There was one place there nearby Dwarka called Nava Vrindavan, which was a replica of Vrindavan constructed by Vishwakarma, who is the architect of, of the devas. So he suggests, let's take Krishna there. That may create some form of, give him some solace and some support. Uh, in the sense that he won't know actually that that's a replica. So let's try to, to give him a shot of, of Brajabhav. <laughs> that may be the need. That was he needs to survive immediately, like immediately. But maybe he shouldn't go with everyone because we don't know what will happen, how will he will react. Only he should go with uh, with um, Balaram and Rohini. Like implying, they are the other two who are basically Brajabhasis. So they, they know Krishna as a Brajabhas and how he will react to Brajabhav. Everyone else may be totally shocked and may not know what to do and that may spoil the whole thing. So only Krishna should go with Baladev and Rohini. So in this replica, there was not only a replica of the trees and the rivers, but of the figures. Jashoda, Radha, Gopis, all of them were there and they seem as if real. So all the inhabitants of Dwarka were not allowed to go there Overtly, like explicit, how do you say? Openly. Yeah, openly. That, but they were hidden, watching the whole performance. If you not performance, but the whole drama, the full unfolding of what's taking. Because they were totally curious. I mean, they were hearing Krishna call them so many times, and what will happen now? So again, Balaram woke up. He agreed with the proposal. He dressed himself as a gopa, and he dressed Krishna as a gopa while Krishna was still. Uh, Fainting, he was not aware. He put, he put, Bamsi, you know, the flute on one side, some cowherd ropes on that other side, 
no? turban, earring. He made the whole Prajavasi decoration, gunja berries, all that is defining features of Krishna, peacock feather and so on. Hmm? And then he woke up Krishna. No? He woke up Krishna. Krishna. No, it's, late. it's getting late for cow herding. Come on. No? Cows and the Brajavas are waiting for us. No, like in, like he, it will happen in, on any normal day in Braj. No, he will wake up Krishna. No? So Krishna woke up. Oh, no, like kind of. He saw Balaram as, as a Gopa. He saw himself as a Gopa. He saw Brindavan around him. So he was like, mm. so he saw Nanda Maharaj. He was like a statue, but he's he saw Nanda Maharaj. He didn't saw a statue. And so he was like, he went to Nanda Maharaj. He mm. put his head on the ground. He touched his feet. Mm. And then he saw Jashoda mm, Dani. Mm. And he went to his mother. I say, hey, Ma, I had a very wonderful dream last night. He say, I, I have to tell you, this is uh, this is too much. Now, I was dreaming that I was leaving Vrindavan and I was going to Mathura, and I killed Kamsa. Oh, imagine killing the king. I killed Kamsa. And then I went to Dwarka, and I married so many queens. And he gave a brief summary. And I was enthroned like a prince there. Such a wonderful dream I had last night. Incredible. But well, the dream is over now. Back to reality. Something like that. No? <laughs> and he's telling Joshua, that's be, be, it's because of this. That was a pretty long dream, so that was I was not able to wake up early as usual. So excuse me, ma, for being late for covering. It's because of this this unique dream that I had to share with you. Today he offered pranam to Yashoda. They are not replying. No, they are just like statues. And then he goes to Rohini, who was not a statue. Remember, it was Rohini herself. So yes, you offer pranam to Rohini, the second mother, and Rohini of course speaks and tells. Go quickly to the forest. You're already late. Your friends are waiting. We, me and Yashoda will send you lunch later for you. You want lunch from us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please send the lunch for me. Okay. We will make all the arrangements for that. So on the way to the forest, Krishna goes and he finds a murti, if you will, of Srirada and some of the gopis. No? So he starts to, to, to send some silent glances to the gopis and he starts to play his flute. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so on. I'm giving a summary again. It's a very beautiful detail of the explanation that Sanatana was found. So he goes close to Sri Radha and said, "My beloved, why are you not, why are you not speaking to me? Are you a man? Are you angry with me? No. Maybe you are angry because you know of the dream I had last night." He said, "And you know how much, how how many queens I married. Maybe you are angry because of, because of that with me, and that's why you are not answering to me anything." <laughs> Krishna is saying like this to that. No. But anyhow, you know that you are the love of my life. And today at night we will meet as usual in the right. So he looks and he kisses Radha, embraces her and continues. I have to go now. See you later. No. <laughs> so at this point, all the Brajabasis, remember, all the Dwarkabasis, sorry, are looking all this and they are totally out of their mind. Like, what's going on? This We never saw this. And so due to ecstasy, they are they are witnessing a new degree of prem that they, they only heard about on some level. So they are out of themselves by witnessing this. So Krishna then continues again. He's in the cowherding dynamic. So he says, okay, he sees the ocean in the distance. Say, oh, ocean. Let's go there. Mistaking that with this. He didn't say ocean. He said Jamuna. No, that's the Jamuna. Let's take the cows to drink water. And let, he says to the Murtis of his friends, and then we will have Jal Kelly. We will play in the water, all the place you want. We need to do that for a while. We're already tired. So he goes close to the ocean. And the more, of course, he gets closer to the quote-unquote Jamuna, he realizes this is too big for being the Jamuna. <laughs> it has no beginning, no end. What's, what's this? So he, says, he realizes this. Uh, he looks back. And at the distance from the place he was in, he sees Dwarka. Uh, he sees like the big palaces and the big things that are not precisely like Brajabasi huts or something like that. So he starts to question, what is this? And, and, and where I am? And then he questions, who I am? <laughs> he has some kind of existential crisis. Because again, each corresponding dham or place corresponds to one identity of Krishna. So when he's in Vrindavan, he knows who he is. When he's in Dwarka, that's another Krishna. So now he thinks he's in Vrindavan, but he realizes 
it's another place of what, where I am and who I am. You tell me where I am and I will tell you who I am. Something like that is this idea. If you tell me where I'm Vrindavan, Krishna knows who he is. <laughs> but in Dwarka, he's somewhere else, someone else, if you will. So at that point, Balaram, who was there, remember, he, he's reminding Krishna. He's bringing him back to the reality of Dwarka. No, like you are in Dwarka. You are the master of Dwarka. You are the prince here and so on. And he explained Brahma's plan and all the background of the whole situation. And Krishna somehow was embarrassed. But he returned hmm, gradually to the palace. He was greeted by all the queens, all the Dwarka bases. And they started to glorify the love of the gopis. Because again, all the Dwarka has just become enlightened about what's Braja Bhav. And then they were able now to understand Krishna more. Like when Uddhava went to meet Krishna in Vrindavan, he thought he knew Krishna and he knew him pretty well. But when he met the Brajavas, he realized, I never met that Krishna, the Krishna they love. Their love corresponds with the Krishna, <clears throat> with the form of Krishna I'm not familiar with. By knowing the love of the Brajavas, I'm back now to Krishna and I feel I know him much more. So all the Dwarkabasis were glorifying Gopi Bhav, especially in this way. But Satyabhama was not present in the assembly because Satyabhama was jealous of the whole situation. That's her mood, basically. So she didn't appear. And Krishna said, where is Satyabhama? She said, she's, she's in her room, angry, no, jealous. And she said, bring, bring her to me now. And Krishna speaks very seriously. And, and, when, and when she comes, she comes and she hides behind a pillar and Krishna speaks to her as to make it clear what's the position of Where's, what's the category and the hierarchy in this connection of everyone in Dwarka and Vrindavan? So I'll read you some verses in this connection, what Krishna says to Satyabham. He says, O weak-minded Satrajiti, another name for Satyabham, just as you grew angry when Rukmini obtained special favors like the Parijata flower, now you're angry at our intense love for the people of Raj. Silly woman, don't you know that I'm ruled by their desires? If the people of Braj thought it good that I renounced everything, I promise you that in a moment I will do just that. But even if for their pleasure I were to return to live with them, I don't see how that will benefit. Now he starts to explain why he's not returning to Vrindavan. Just by seeing me, they become so da das dazed, dazed, dazed. dazed and bewildered by ecstasies from deep within that they fail to recognize their own bodies and everything that has to do with their bodies. What to speak of the rest of the world? So their pain won't be relieved even if they see me. Their hearts will be so disturbed by thoughts of separation from me that whatever measures I take from their, for their happiness will only double their grief. Therefore, my staying with them will be equal to my absence. Realizing this, I have not returned there. Now hear the real reason I married you. Now comes big blow. The sight of Rukmini made me remember the gopis all the more. And the sorrow and distress this caused me made me very much disturbed. Some 16,100 gopis had with vows worshipped Katyayani to obtain me, to bring my, my, my mind somewhat to peace by seeing a likeness to them of them, I married the same number of you queens here in Dwarka. <laughs> Krishna is basically saying, I married all of you because somehow you resembled the gopis and made me think about them. Mm. So you can imagine Satyabam, how is she? <laughs> mm. So Krishna starts to get very deeply absorbed again in glorifying Brajabhav and Uddhav is there and he's afraid oh, he will enter into trance again and nobody knows what will happen. So he orders the queens do something about that. So the queens go to Krishna's feet. They start to glorify him, glorify Brajabhav. And other personalities came. And eventually the whole section of the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita closes with Narad Muni appearing on a scene. And uh, he starts to glorify Krishna and glorify the nature of Prem, especially Braja Prem. All this is to highlight the nature of Braja Prem, basically. And Krishna is so much satisfied by hearing Narada glorifying the nature of divine love. And he asked Narada, as I think we said the other day here or somewhere, please take a boon from me. 
I'm so pleased with you, Narada. Ask me whatever you want. And Narada Muni say, okay. The main thing he will ask is, may nobody be ever satisfied with your prem. I think we say that the other day, no, right? May whoever attains that prem may never be fully satisfied with that. That's the point. They may always attain you. And, you. and Krishna says, but what's that weird request? I mean, if you pay close attention, it's a fact that that's already taking place. So ask for another boon, basically. Uh, implying the nature of premise through so sound through throw the person who has that prem the premika into an ocean of divine dissatisfaction mm -hmm. it's way above mere satisfaction mm -hmm. in the conditions state we may be after mm -hmm. satisfaction self satisfaction but the goal of post liberated goal of Kodi Vaishnavism is of another nature mm -hmm. so anyhow this is an introduction to Dwarka and in connection to Brajabhava and how Brajabhava can take place in the context of that. So now I'd like to share in a more in a brief, more brief way, some narratives that are more and more connected with today's celebration. Rathiatra, all this in connection to Dwarka. No? To begin one with one classical uh, narrative uh, that will be more tied to Dwarka. Rajabab and the forms of Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. And the first in, in the introduction, we have not yet touched Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Athriyatra. We have touched Dwarka and Rajabab. Now we will go to one story about the forms of Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, how they take place in connection with Rajabab in Dwarka. And the last story will be in connection to Rathriyatra per se. So this, uh, all these stories, of course, share some common elements from the other ones. So this particular one has to do with the Dwarka Basis, again, hearing Krishna calling the gopis at night, the queens calling, hearing Krishna calling Jashoda, Radha, Lalita, Madhu Mangal, etc., everyone, cows. And they are they are become more and more intrigued as the time passes, like, who are these Brajavasis? What's their, the love they have for Krishna? Why Krishna is dreaming all night about them? And during the day, he seems lost somewhere else we are not fully able to figure out what's taking place in his mind so we want to know him more we want to serve him more but it's like a mystery for us we never we heard about these first 11 mysterious years in Vrindavan but we don't have a clue what happened there so so all these queens after being so much intrigued they go to Rohini in Dwarka who remembered Rohini is living in Dwarka as Balaram but they witnessed Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. So they, they, they are Brajavasis, basically. So they go to Rohini and ask, please, can you narrate Brajalila hmm, Kata for us so we can further grasp who is Krishna? We know one side of Krishna. We are very, it's very clear for us, very apparent. That there is some, some, some other side to him that we have no experience of. So we'll like at least to glimpse at that. So Rohini says, okay, I'll, I'll share Braja Lila Kata with you. But this, this is very intense, Rohini said. The, the, the depth of love and experience, the, the interaction there is, is too much. So I don't know what will happen. What will happen to me? What will happen to all of you? So we have to take some, how to say, caution, cautionary measurements or something like that. So let's do the, and especially, I don't know what will happen in Krishna and Balaram get to hear about that. Oh my God, I don't know. I mean, we just knew, but in this Lila, they, she said, I don't know what will happen. So we have to make sure that somehow or other Krishna and Balaram are not present in the assembly. So it will be between you and me, all you queens, and me in a secluded, closed space. And actually we need to put someone to guard the door in case Krishna and Balaram happen to come nearby. So you will, whatever, you will have some little bell or something and the narration will stop their coming because we don't know what will happen. Everything may collapse. <clears throat> so Subhadra is appointed to be the, the one, the Jai Bijai one, you know, the gatekeeper. <laughs> so Subhadra, Krishna's sister, is there. So she's, okay, she's, her, her duty is just look out for Krishna and Balaram and let me know, Rohini told 
if they are coming, I'll stop the narrative at the moment. Okay, so Rohini starts Raja Lila Kata, in chronological order from Krishna's birth and all the unfolding of the different Lilas, Kumar Lila, Poganda Lila, Kishore Lila, and entering deeper and deeper and deeper and getting lost and found in that Harikata. Herself, especially being a Brajavasi, but all the queens also get in totally one epiphany after another, but get into you know, that their Krishna is like showing himself in, in so many new layers in, in front of them through the lens of Harikata. So everyone is totally absorbed and, and thrilled, and, 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 and nobody's paying attention to anything else. So that's why they needed someone else attentive to what they have to be attentive, which was Subhadra, but somehow <laughs> Subhadra was there as a gatekeeper and was watching out of Krishna and Balaram and Krishna and Balaram, they shouldn't come. But she was close enough to the narration to have one year hearing Brajalila Kata, hearing Brajalila Kata. So probably was one year, but eventually she was totally captured. <laughs> it was her half, her half of her was... Inside, half of her was outside, but eventually it was like the percentage, the scale turns 100% to the Brajalila equation. So she lost all composure and all loss. And, and she became Subhadra as we saw her in the altar with Jagannath and Baladev. You know? So whew, eyes expanded, you know? arms contracted you know? to the point of no arms in the case of Subhadra. <laughs> they are pretty contracted. <laughs> And on stamba, no, without moving, and all these different sattvic vibes, all these different existential ecstasies. <clears throat> so, gatekeeper gone. <laughs> and casually, just casually, you know, Krishna Balaram happened to be walking nearby the area. You know? So, at distance, they saw Subhadra, they saw their sister in such a way, you know, like a Buddha totem or something. <laughs> <laughs> And they, of course, they are they are rasikas. They are they are connoisseurs of, of of love. So they know what's happening if someone is exhibiting ecstatic symptoms. So at this time, they they examine, scan Subhadra's condition, and they look at each other like something very interesting must be happening over there, because look how our sister is is doing. Yeah. So they got close, and again Rohini continued the narration. The queens were absorbed. Nobody knew that Subhadra had collapsed. And became what she became. So Krishna and Balaram lived closer. And one put one stands on one side of Subhadra, the other on the next side, like you see in the altar. Subhadra is in the center, Jagannabal, and they start to hear. And, and gradually, <laughs> eyes start to expand, arms start to contract, and all these different bodily ecstasies invade both Krishna and Balaram. They had acquired this form that we know as. Jagannath Baladev in Subhadra as they appear in Puri. So this is one Lila that journalists shared in connection to how to explain these three forms, which are pretty, how to say them, wondrous, in connection to the Dwarka Lila, but in connection to the Braja Lila specifically as well. So now we will go to the final story that we would like to share today, which is taking us finally to the Chariot Festival. First, we, we try to prepare the ground with some other <laughs> narratives, all of them in connection with Dwarka and Brindavan. But now we will go to to the Rathayatra per se, which what what we are celebrating today. Again, from the perspective of Dwarka, we already touched on the Kurukshetra lens. Now we'll go to the Dwarka lens. So this particular narrative begins. <clears throat> Somewhat similarly to, to the story of Riha Bhagavatamrita, mm -hmm. Krishna is extremely disturbed in Dwarka, mm -hmm. falling unconscious in separation from, from, from the Brajavas. And of course, you may go there and there will be some many of similar stories with slight variation. But if you pay attention, all of them are making the same point. Again, all of this Dwarka Lila is pointing back to Braj. Dwarka Lila, Kurukshetra Lila, Jagannath Puri representing one or the other. Mm -hmm. So again, one day Krishna is crying, deep separation from the Brajavas, is not performing his duties as, 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 as a king there. So Balaram is there, Narada is there, Subhadra is there, so many others are there. And what to do? You know, what's the solution to this dilemma? 
So Nar and Moon is in this case the one who will propose something and who will say, I I'll sing about, I'll sing Brajalila Kahani, you know, I, I will invoke topics about Vrindavan with my Bina. Hmm? And, and, and Krishna will wake up hmm? because he was unconscious, he was not returning. So they were thinking how to make him return. So Nara said, I know how, how to make him return. He will start singing. Nara the Muni Bajaya Vina Radhika Ramana Ram. So and everyone agrees. Okay, Nara Muni, this our sage Devarishi Narad has spoken. So but the point is, okay, you will sing, he will wake up, but after he will wake up, he will want to go to Braj immediately. And we are in Dwarka. That's not precisely on the other side of the of the corner. But he will want to go to Brindavan, and most of them will say, okay, no problem. But Naramuni say, well, if he goes now to Braj, uh, we don't know what will happen to him. I mean, if he goes suddenly there and he just arrived to Braj, but saying impromptu, you know, without them knowing, we don't know because the Brajavas is at present, Naramuni is aware, they are suffering so much <clears throat> in separation from Krishna. As we mentioned before, they are just on the verge of death. This is the last stage of separation, Mriti. Mm -hmm. So if Krishna goes and suddenly sees the condition of the Brajavas as they are now, we don't know what will happen to Krishna by, by witnessing that. He has heard about that, has heard about that, but witnessing that with his own eyes. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we can do is we can do that, but <clears throat> organize the whole thing. Well, not just like Krishna wakes up and just runs to bring down and finds such a shocking stage. So we can maybe send a message with Udav. Already Udav did that in the past. And, 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 and Udav will say, he will raise his hand. I, I was not able to do that much. He said, I tried to do my best. I, I somehow, I helped to keep them alive. But I don't, I was not really able to fully console them. The only thing that will console them is, that I, I, I concluded, I, I went with so much philosophy and Siddhanta, and you are so fortunate, Nanda, you show that you love God as your child. It didn't work. <laughs> I tried to inject Aishwarya in their DNA. It didn't work. At the end, I, I realized the only thing I can say, the best possible thing is Krishna will return soon to you. That's the only thing I, I was. they had an ear for. And I had to repeat that over and over again. <laughs> But Uda would say, and I did that, and I say that so many times. But if I go now there, they will see me and say, they won't believe me a word. Because I told them so many times, Krishna will return, Krishna will return, but he never returned. So they will think, Uda is a liar. Now he's coming again with some other lie. So they won't have years for me. So then the Dwarka was to say, maybe Balaram. Balaram is a better option. He's a Rajabasi. And Balaram says, I already went there as a messenger <laughs> some years back. Mm -hmm. And again, nothing was working. I tried to console. Of course, he did better than Udav. He's a Vrajavasi. Mm -hmm. But he realized the same thing. The only thing that will work here is Krishna has to be back himself. Mm -hmm. So if I return myself, Balaram say without Krishna, they won't believe me. So I don't think that's the best plan. So what we can do? Mm -hmm. So then Subhadra raised his, her hand and said, I can go. I can go. I'm a lady. I'm more trustworthy than men. And I never went there as a messenger. So I, I don't have my reputation. Like, how do you say? Tainted? No. Ruined. Yeah, basically. So I will go and I will sit on the lap of Yashoda Mai. And I will tell Krishna just on his way. Everything is being prepared. Some kings are worshipping him on the path. That's why he's delayed. But he's coming. So they will believe me. So everyone kind of felt... Yeah, that sounds like a plan. So Balaran said, I'll go also. Again, I say I won't go myself first when I will follow you because also you are my my younger sister, so I have to go. So this way, Balaran said, I go. So they broke the chariots. So here, Rath Theatra, Dwarka version starts to take shape. So, so the, the chariots go first... Uh, Baladev is going first because again, so Badr is going first, but Baladev is going first in the chariot. Like I'm protecting my. But when we are getting closer, okay, you enter first now, and basically, so first Baladev, then Subhadra, and 
at the at the end Jagannath, at the end Krishna who is still thrown on the floor, fainted totally, intoxicated by the wine of separation. <laughs> so the chariots were made and everyone started to go to, to Brindava. Hmm? So it is said that when they were getting close to Brindavan, the, the ones coming from Dwark and the chariots, they were shocked by the but what they saw there, hmm? the condition of the Rajabasis. Hmm? And some, there are different ways that they depict this. And some they will say that Yashoda was still standing like a statue in the same spot where Krishna left, which was taken by Akrura when he left Vrindavan, just looking at the horizon of that, that same this point where he was leaving and he was supposed to be returning. So from that day for decades, he was just standing like a statue looking without blinking in that particular spot, waiting for Krishna, waiting for Godhuli or some cow dust <laughs> to indicate, or some dust indicate he's coming. Mm -hmm. Or some other will say his her house. There are different versions and all of them make the point. No? Some of them will say in madness she continues cooking, expecting Krishna to come. Or some other will say her whole kitchen was full of, how do you say, cow webs or something? Because cob webs. Okay. Because she was not, Gopal was not there. Hmm? Already say that the gopis were so thin in separation that the the, ring, the rings of her fingers now now were used as bracelets. <laughs> some depicting some pictorial idea of how thin they were. No? You just say that the Govardhan was becoming smaller and smaller in separation of Krishna, and only because of the curse it received. <laughs> Jamuna was drying. Rupa Goswami well in poetic terms well depict. All the trees of Rindavan well were about to die because of being dried, but no, none, none of the trees died because all of them were watered by oceans of tears from the Brajavasis. <laughs> so both ways they are indicating they were keeping alive among themselves, although that was not conscious intention, basically. So it is said that when Baladeva and Subhadra arrived there and, there and contemplated such a scene, they were so deeply affected. That they became stamba, and all the members started to adopt the forms that we know in the altar, like Jagannath, well, not Jagannath here, but Baladev and Subhad, big eyes, inserted arms, and sometimes called Mahabhap Prakash, like manifestation of the greatest ecstatic emotion. So Subhadra was not able to give any message <laughs> because she collapsed right witnessing the condition of the Rajavas and Baladev in the same way. Krishna is still in Dwarka, fainted. Because again, the idea was they go first, they give the message, they prepare the ground, they tell the Rajavas Krishna is coming, then somehow we receive the news in Dwarka and we take Krishna there. So in Dwarka, Krishna takes, uh, Narad Muni takes his bina. And he starts to sing some Brajali Lakata, no? Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kopi Janabalava Giri Bharadhadi and so on. So Krishna starts to Bhakti no Thakur's song reveals in the midst of, of the Lila Samha. <laughs> so Krishna hears all this Brajali Lakata from the mouth of Narada. So immediately he he wakes up and puts his hand on his wrist, you say, looking for his flute. No. And, 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 and he wakes up, but sees Narad Muni, and says, Udav, and says, like, where I am? Again, he immediately was thrown into Brajabab, and then he finds like a somehow contradictory stage. And they remind him where you are. Actually, you are in Dwarka. And Krishna starts to cry like mad. You know, like, I want to go to Raj. I want to go to Raj. And they say, yes, we know that. I mean, we knew that will be your reaction. So everything is ready for that to happen. And they explain the plan they had. So Krishna is kind of intoxicated at that point. And, and, and that's the state in which they carry him to the chariot. And, and that's why Jagannath in the Rathiyatra is being carried like that, according to our Gaudiya lens. No? The, that, sec that, that ceremony of the festival is Pahandivijaya. And if you see, they will carry Jagannath like this. No? Like when you have your friend and you took some extra extra cups of drink at night, <laughs> he's not able to return home by himself. So, so he needs his two friends like to 
And actually, they are carrying him. He's not able to, almost to walk. So here we have Krishna totally drunk by love, of separation of, of Prajavasya. So in this way, Jagannath, if you see in the Rath Theater, he's taken to the chariot in that state, like moving him like this, like indicating he's drunk. No, he's totally intoxicated by Radha Madhuri, by the wine of, of the Prem of Vrindavan and Radha in particular, as we'll see. So going back to Vrindavan for a moment, they say that Sri Radha, since we invoke her name and presence, she's dying in separation from Krishna more than ever. Now, of course, that, that possibility reaches new heights every day. So Sri Radha is lying in Nidavan, almost with her last breath basically she's uh, lying in the, in the in the lap of Lalita and they are again she has they are trying to put some cotton to test she's alive they're putting sandalwood paste to refresh her but immediately touches her feverish like body <laughs> it becomes like it breaks and becomes like dust mm -hmm. so all Vrindavan is surrounding at this moment sometimes it's described like that all of the Brajbas are surrounding Sri Radha and I'm, I'm crying, I'm, I'm praying, please do not leave us. Do not leave us. You are Vrindavan Ishwar. You know, if you leave us, we will die. All Vrindavan will disappear. You know, without you, there is no Vrindavan. So all her so-called uh, enemies, if you want to put it like that, appear on this scene. So Chandravali appears there, which of course is is the cousin of Sri Radha, but in the dynamics of the Lila, she seems like the rival, rival lover. So she's crying at the feet of Sri Radha and is telling, please do not leave us, do not leave us. And, and, and the only reason Krishna is coming to visit me in my kunja is only because she, he wants to, to relish your man. And when you get angry with him because he visits me, that's the only reason why she comes to me. It's not actually he loves me. He loves you 108%. So, but she, he relishes so much seeing you in manini state. That's why... I'm being instrumental in this. I'm just playing this secondary role for your sake. And then, I don't know, comes Kutila. No, and, and again, I have a crying at the feet of Sri Radha. I have offended you so much by defaming, you say? Mm -hmm. Defaming you, you know, here and there. There are many Lilas in that connection. We won't enter into the details now. So all of them crying there, crying there. Then Abhimanyu comes into the scene. The so-called husband of Sri Radha, <laughs> also crying at the feet of Sri Radha. Mm -hmm. Please do not leave. Some people say I'm your husband, but that never happened. I, we never enter in, in contact our in ourselves. So that's just some myth. So all, all of Brindavan is even again the so-called anti-party <laughs> crying at the feet of Sri Radha. Please, please, please do not leave us. Do not leave us. And so meanwhile, Krishna is being brought as fast as possible in the chariot. Krishna is totally recovering from his intoxication somehow. And when they arrive to Vrindavan, the news about Radha's condition reaches Krishna's ears. So he goes straight to her, running, 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 and he finds her just on the border of death. Mm -hmm. And again, try to keep in mind, this is Ratha Yatra, basically. No? These are the three chariots and the, and the journey from Dwarka to Vrindavan. No? Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So when Krishna sees... Uh, Radha, in that particular condition, he falls into a, in, an intense ecstatic uh, experience and he adopts the forms of Jagannath. You know, his eyes start to expand, his arms start to become like extended and enter into his body, and so many other symptoms come. So, so they are together, but the two of them are basically <laughs> in their own world of ecstatic uh, fainting or whatever. So Brinda Devi is there. So Brinda Devi organizes, she's the orchestrator of these details. So some breeze, you say breeze? No? Breeze may, 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 may move the, the fragrance of Krishna's body and enter into Sri Radha's nostrils, who has fainted on the ground. And when that's happening, immediately Lalita Devi also tells Radha in the year, Krishna has come. Krishna has finally come. Krishna has come. So, so Sri Radha opens her eyes. But now Krishna has come, but he's gone you know, because he's in, in excess, he fainted next to him. <clears throat> so basically, that gradually, Vishaka goes now next to Krishna and goes to your ears and starts to, to chant Radhi, 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 Radhi. You know? So it is said that in that moment, 
Christians start to, to awake no? and, and Raz starts to awake. And they, and Sila Gorgobinda Maharaj said, there, there was union, eye to eye union, one another, basically. And finally, the union between Radha and Krishna happened finally. And, and, and Krishna says that to commemorate this, this unique pastime, he said, I will keep my Mahabhav Prakash Rup, this form of ecstatic symptoms that I manifested by seeing you, I will keep that form eternally in Puri and that will be worshipped. And, and there we will be finding each other, one another constantly. So Sri Jagannath sometimes is called Radha Viraha Virudha Rupa, or the form in which Krishna adopts a particular form out of extreme separation from, from Sri Radha. That's basically for us Gaudias, again, for us Gaudias, <laughs> what Jagannath is ultimately about. You know, it's That's a result of Radha Prem. The impact, the arrows of Radha Prem on Krishna in separation from her, <clears throat> that's the God we worship, Jai, Jai Jagannath. Hmm? Jai, Jai. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically this is this is a very beautiful narrative to connect this Rathiyatra festival in connection to in relation to, to to Dwarka and, and how the whole procession of the Rathiyatra represents a journey from Dwarka to Mundicha to Vrindavan. And, and speaking about the power of love and how that love is all conquering. No? Interestingly, we were speaking yesterday, the main figure in one sense in the Lila is Jagannath, in the center, and, and and we know this expression that came from, if I'm not mistaken, from the Europeans eventually, juggernaut. No? And, and and I was inter I was I mean I knew the, the general idea of that, but I I looked for the specific definition that is given, and juggernaut is translated as a massive inexorable force, campaign movement or object that crushes whatever is in its path. That's a, that's Jagannath. <laughs> Now, that's the movement of Jagannath. That is, it's a movement, an inexorable force, the force of love, a campaign, a movement, Mahaprabhu's hmm? movement, worshiping Jagannath. And, and, and Jagannath is, again, Krishna is driven by Radha hmm? and crushing anything on its way. No? That, that's it. The chart going to bring down, going to save Sri Radha, hmm? and crushing everything on its way. Hmm? Like Srila Siddhartha, Hari Bhagati Prem Nasa Bhava Kuti Lava Ved. Rupa Goswami said, Love moves in a crooked way like a snake. And Srila Siddhartha will say, he, Love moves like a snake because in its movement, it in, embraces everything that is on its way. It's not leaving everything behind. Because if you walk in a straight line, not lying, so many things can be left behind on both sides. But if you walk like this, you're embracing everything and making all that part. Of your of your campaign of your progress of your equation, <laughs> so this is the the very idea of juggernaut, you know? <laughs> a very powerful force that is crushing everything on its path. So that's the the power of love. No matter what you put in, in on its way, love will take that and will nourish from that. You no, know? Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur <clears throat> defines that in Prem Samput. He says. He says the power love is feeding from obstacles. So if you put obstacles in someone who has no love, maybe the person gets discouraged and that's over. The expedition is over. But if someone has love, whatever you put on it on their way as obstacles, they will feed on those obstacles and regain new strength. And he gives the example of a lion that is walking and on the path an elephant comes and the elephant wants to attack. It's an obstacle. But the lion defeats the elephant and eats the elephant. So it becomes strengthened by the obstacle and continue his campaign with renewed force. <laughs> so similarly, Vishwanath Chakwar Thakur, that's the nature of Prem. If someone has Prem, especially the Prem of the Brajabhasis, you put whatever you like on the obstacle on, on the way, no? separation, Aishwarya, as we spoke these days, Brajabhasis will witness Aishwarya, their Madhurya will increase. Krishna is showing majesty, their intimacy will increase. You put separation, their love will increase. You put union, their love will increase. <laughs> the prem will become expanded and expanded and expanded. So I will say that for us Gaudias, even the, the, the implications of the term juggernaut <laughs> are more precise than the, the, the notion of Jagannath as mere lord of the universe, if you will. <laughs> 
I'm not saying that from now on we will sing Jai Juggernaut Baladev Subhadra, <laughs> but we have to bear in mind no, the European who invoked that, although some may interpret that in a negative connotation, we, we can own that definition and re re reproduce that in our particular context. So anyhow, some words we want to share today in, in this sacred occasion, most sacred occasion of Sri Bhakti Yatra, uh, from the perspective of Sir Dwar Kadam, in appreciation of Raja Bhav. <clears throat> so I don't know if there are any questions or comments or things you may like to, to share, to contribute with. Rigupat Prabhu has some contribution to the cause. I really don't like Dwarakish Krishna. Okay. I hate him almost. Okay. <laughs> because, and also the Dwarakavasis, uh -huh. they are so stupid. <laughs> This is a Brigupa I like to see. Yeah. The I scholar, the scholar <laughs> bureaucracy is over here. Yeah. We want to see the real, the real. Yeah. Because Krishna is saying, I love the Rajavasis so much. Their love, they have conquered everything. And then for a hundred years, he's not going back to Vindavan. Mm -hmm. And he's sending Uddhava to say that I'm coming. In a few days, I will come. And he doesn't go. And then he's sending some letters. It's so infuriating to think mm -hmm. about. I get so upset when I think about. And then in Dvaraka, then when he is uh, crying for the 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 Rajavasis, then they make this stupid Nava Vrindavan, which is just so like like let's console Krishna. And they are not even thinking about the Rajavasis mm -hmm. that they need to be consoled. They are just thinking how shall we uh, keep him keep him happy. Mm -hmm. So I really don't like it. So that's that, but I like the last story where they are finally bringing him to, to bring down. But what could he say? I mean, Sanatana Goswami in Brihad Bhagavatam, mm -hmm. of course, he explains why Krishna can't go back to Vrindavan, but mm -hmm. it's not convincing, I think. Not... I don't think to go to Vrindavan. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I think I would say that's the very intention of this story that someone like Brigupa will say, I want him to go to Vrindavan. I want him to go. This is nothing else is is enough. No? Mm -hmm. I, I think also the the very purpose of this narrative is to take us to that Brajavasi conclusion because that's what the Brajavas are are like saying. I want we want him, we want nothing else. We, we only want him going back. So the idea is that each one of us are transported to that very like empathic support like yeah only him returning will that's the only way and stupid bark of us and all <laughs> with all respect of course to so them we have to yeah the brigupa now is returning after catharsis <laughs> of course there are so many ways that our acharyas try to explain that, of course, to begin with, the, the very basic explanation is he never lives in Davan. So we have to put that, we have to put that on the scale, Brigupad. You have to put that one on the scale. <laughs> on, on the, of course, on the eternal Lila, he never lives in Davan. On the earthly Lila, that's predominated by separation. So it seems he lives in Davan in one particular form, although he remains there eternally, he cannot live. And the purpose of separation is making the heart grow fonder, and and, and blessing so many, of course, also of the of the prem premikas sadhana siddhas that are are entering there, and they need to further upgrade their prem. And the only way that they will upgrade their prem is by going through some intense fire of separation. So there's there's like very multi-purpose dynamics happening at the same time. So, but I will say. It, that the end, the very end of the to, to go to a practical thing is that yeah, the whole purpose of this story is that you really feel this like emotional like a connection and identification with the Brajavas is like okay, they are the real heroes here. No, they're I, I want to follow them, I want to be one of them, and so on. <clears throat> of course, much more can be said in connection to Krishna living Vrindavan and reasons for that to happen, but I fear that Brigupa may get too emotional and may start to break the house or something. <laughs> we have just had a glimpse of 
the non-scholar Brigupad Das. So I think that's enough dose for today. Maybe in these days we can try to. <laughs> no, 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 no. That that's who you are. We are we are getting a hint of the real Brigupad here. So we are happy. Thank you so much. <laughs> Something else. Omkar is saying, Jai Juggernaut. <laughs> Jai. That's another conclusion. Yeah, Nora. Uh, you have mentioned a couple of times during this place that we have to prepare ourselves to give our, like Mahaprabhu alive in the Nitya mm. So is it like there also that we take part in short time period of his life, like Adi Lila or Matya or... Again, what, what do you say at the end? Like in, the last part is... Uh, in Nitya Lila. In Gora Lila, yeah. so that we take part in Shatan, like Adi Lila or Matya Lila or Antya Lila, according to our liking. Like, if it's so in uh, Krishna Lila that we support him, I mean, serve him in certain age that we feel most attracted to. Mm. Well, that's that's a whole topic to be elaborated on. And there has not been that much detailed description. What's my point with this? The general idea is that we are. <clears throat> Because we have, okay, we have the prospect of worshipping Krishna as Gaudi as mostly in Vrindavan. That's the window that Mahaprabhu comes to give. Premarasa niriyasa kurita ashwatan raga marga bhakti loki kurita prachana. But of course we have Krishna in Dwarka, we have Krishna in Mathura, but generally we won't think we will choose those options because basically our sampradaya is not focused in that direction. Although in Vrindavan, in the Vrindavan window, there are some opportunities. There's some variety there. So according to one's association one may have, there may be certain tendencies. And of course, in the Nitya Lila, again, there is Dwarka, Mathura, and Vrindavan, but our window as Gaudias will be Vrindavan, unless someone has some bhakti, some scar from previous life, and somehow it's connected to Mahapur. And this, that can happen, some will be more like an exception to the rule, which we are not downplaying because of being the exception, but just... And regarding Mahaprabhu, the general <clears throat> idea is to worship him in Navadvip. Generally, we hear Nitya Navadvip. I hear Navadvip means what, what we see mostly in the Adi Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, for example. Him being Vishwambar, not being a sannyasi, not leaving Navadvip, and so on. So that's the main conception that our Acharyas had given when writing about that, like Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, uh, Gopal Guru Goswami, Dhyana Chandra Goswami, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, they have described Ashtakaliya Lila of the eternal dynamics of Mahaprabhu in in Golok, Golok, but they will say Golok Navadvi. That say there are some devotees who, who are of the opinion that there is a Jagannath Puri in which Mahaprabhu eternally resides in Vaikuntha. Again, that has not been very elaborated but from what I could glimpse. I was speaking recently with Madhavananda Prabhu. He told me that even there are some Gaur Astakali Lila in Jagannath Puri, in which he's perpetually a sannyasi <laughs> by more kind of obscure text from Orissa, not so popular, but some ideas are there. And, and, and I have gone through some in, in the book project I have in mind, that part comes at one point. So there has been some exchanges, and you have this section in Brihad Bhagavatam written, which in, in the journey of Gopa Kumar in Vaikuntha, at one point he is in Jagannath Puri. So there are some ways one could make a case for, for that to happen, which again is not, uh, <clears throat> it's not the general emphasis of our Sampradaya, but there's room for further exploration, <laughs> basically. But again, the general <clears throat> mood, as we say, as the Brajabhasis want Krishna back in Vrindavan, do not like to see Krishna as a whatever, a prince, a king, a, a big guy. The parallel of this big guy of, of Krishna outside of Vrindavan is Mahaprabhu Sanyas. You know? So all the Nadia Basis are, they do not like Mahaprabhu Sanyas. So it's up until 24 or? Sorry? Of, age, of his age. 24, he took sannyas? Or? Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 So following the feeling of the Nadia Basis, they will reply kind of with Brigu, but say, I hate that sannyas. 
<laughs> I hate Katwa. I hate that Keshava. <laughs> I'm just joking. I know the Prabhupada is properly respectful, but there is place for some expressions of power there, are some emotion. So so yeah, but you know, Thakur himself sings about like, oh, when when Nimai will leave his sannyas and return to Navadvi with us. So that's kind of the of the portal we have been re receiving in, in our Bhakti Not Party Bar. Of course, it doesn't mean that we will we have to understand that. It doesn't mean like, okay, let's study Madhya Lila. Oh no, Maharaj, that's Mahaprabhu's sannyas. I hate that. No, no it's not like that. No. Yeah. You can say I hate that when you have studied everything and appreciated everything that comes some proper bab like Bhakti Not Thakur, when he will leave that sannyas. But first you have to worship the, his sannyas and, and learn that. That's why like one devotee was asking me some months ago in Kansas. That was a good question. He was pointed at the Panchat. Well, there was one picture of the Panchatatla. He told Maras, there we have, who are there? Who are there? He asked me. So I repi repeated the Panchatatla mantra. So Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shadvaita Gadadar Srivas Adigopa. Say, but you say Sri Krishna Chaitanya. I say, but <laughs> Mahaprabhu is not a Sri Krishna Chaitanya then. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> I say, why why we worship the Panchatatta with the mantra that includes Mahaprabhu as a sannyasi? Because we are not projecting that into eternity. And he was curious about that. He was not like challenging, just like wanting. To know, I mean, we project to worship him not as a sannyas. So why we repeat this mantra? And of course, <clears throat> the main idea that, that came is because in order to worship him not as a sannyas, first we have to worship him as a sannyas. Uh, we have to learn through all his acharya lilas. My guru likes to say first. That's why the Gaur Gayatri also begins with the first name of the three names is Chaitanya. And then comes yeah, Bishwam Gaur. You won't be Shwambar Gore, first Chaitanya, first mm -hmm. the Sanyas, first go through Puri, first learn from all that he talked as by example, mm -hmm. by precept, and, and all the whole Lila <clears throat> in Jagannath Puri, Gambira, whoop, points back to Navadip, to where it all began, points back to Sri Vasangam, points down to the entrance of that eternal Rasa Kirtan in the courtyard of Sri Vaspandit. But first we have to be able to. <clears throat> To appreciate his sannyas. Similarly, in order to enter Braj, we have to go through Mathura and Dwarka <laughs> and appreciate those things that we may say I hate that, but I know that in depth we we, we the, those are helping us a lot. Those are creating a very particular lens to appreciate Brindam for a very unique perspective. That without that, we don't have that that other point of reference to create the contrast and realize, wow. And so they are creating that contrast that further highlights the glory of Vrindavan. So that's a way of indirect, I won't say indirect Parokh Shabbat, indirect speech, but it's an indirect praise of, of the Braj by showing what Braj is not <laughs> and putting the two of them together and see the contrast of one another. <clears throat> so we need to go through those things, all the separation that it entails and the contrast between Aishwar, Madhurya, all the things have to be in place in our conception and our spirit in bhajan so someday we can enter that land that is made of that. So, yeah. Okay. Yes. Can you also say something about that we can enter both levels, Krishna and Gora Lila? Can you say something about it? Yeah. Well, basically that's of course, it's not like an imposition. <laughs> it's not that we are condemned for to do that. It will happen if we want that. In other words, it's it will depend on which level of affinity we have in our in our bhajan. If we conduct ourselves, and that's what Bhakti Notakur says and some others, if you conduct your worship by having equal level of attraction to both lilas, you will be you have an identity there. But if you kind of conduct your, for example, your worship of Mahaprabhu more as a mere bridge to Krishna Lila, as just like a medium, a means to the goal of Krishna Lila, then you may attain Krishna Lila exclusively, if you will, but not Gaur Lila. Which, of course, in one sense, Gaur Lila is non-different from Krishna Lila, but it's a very special and unique 
extension of Krishna Lila, chamber of Krishna Lila that you may choose to access or not. Again, it's not like force. And, and, and there are some Gaudias who, who, of course, have this type of affinity, have more affinity for Gaur Lila than Krishna Lila. Again, when I am speaking in this way, do not create a they caught them in your mind, no? Gaur Lila, Krishna Lila, like Kurus Pandavas or whatever, black or white. <laughs> They're the same thing, but one unique expression of the other. So some will have more affinity to Gaur Lila, some will have more affinity to Krishna Lila, some will have more affinity to both. <laughs> so there will be a corresponding uh, um, experience of, of them in eternity, depending how we conduct in our bhajan here now. That's what Krishna said, Yatamam Prabhupada, and so many verses saying the basic. As you approach me in bhajan, I will reward you in, in, in sadhana, in sadhya, sorry. As you approach me in sadhana, I will reward you accordingly in, in, in sadhya. Hmm? Bhakti Yoga and so on. So, <clears throat> so there is place, of course, again, we, we try to think too much about that in three-dimensional terms and, and we may collapse because we have enough of dealing with one's identity and one and the mind we have now. <laughs> we think, do not give me two, please. <laughs> but it's not about two, although it seems two, Try to keep in mind this Advaya Gyan Tattva, this non-dual nature of transcendence. So it's, it's, it's one reality, but expressed in two ways. And again, till one, till on some level, we can just make it fit in our heads. It still may seem you are two people, but you are not two people. No, do not go dysfunctional because that may be too much. I'm two people. What, what's going on? I, I, I'm one. No, I become two. What? So as Srila Prabhupada say. Try to go there and find it for yourself. So try to <laughs> whatever remains as a mystery to be fully grasped and realized will come in meditation and revelation as a result of our bhajan. But, but yeah, the possibility is there, and that's why our church have kind of intertwined their sometimes their, their presentation of Krishna Lila with Gaur Lila, Gaur Tandrika, and this type of systems that have been introduced, trying to create a connection between these Leelas, parallels between different Leelas, and how, uh, as my Guru Mahesh likes to say, the, the deeper you go into Gaur Leela, the more you emerge in Krishna Leela. The deeper you go in Krishna Leela, the more you emerge in Gaur Leela. It's a state of consciousness. <laughs> but yeah, I'm planning to write a whole book on that, so that will be my belated reply to your questions in a few years, if <laughs> Mahaprabhu <laughs> wants to play, so. Remind me about that in a few later visits. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Something else? Okay, I think we can conclude here. It's one hour and a half already. So tomorrow we will have Harikata in the morning, I think, first. Brahma Stuti at 10 a.m. Finland time. Uh, AM and uh, again I think we have this Tagosti question and, and answers in the evening 5.30 it's Finland time so whoever wants to come you're invited thank you so much Shri Gurudev Ki Jai Shri Man Mahaprabhu Ki Jai Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Shri Shri Ratha Yatra Ki Jai Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadri Ki Jai Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadri Ki Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrind Ki Jai Gaur Priman Hari Bo Vancha Kalpata Rubhya Shagri Paas Indu Vyeva Cha Pati Tanam Pavani Fyo Vaishna Vipya Namo Namo Nanta Koti Vaishna Vrind Ki Jai Gaur Hari Bo Gaur Hari Bo